Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today, we're, let's continue to integrate rational functions. Um, because it's a rational function, so we usually integrate this by using partial fraction decomposition to, uh, to decompose the rational function into partial fractions, and then we can integrate each partial fraction directly, hopefully, right? Sometimes we cannot. You probably need to do a use sub or some other techniques. But um, at the beginning, what we need to do here is to check whether that's a proper fraction. And so as you can see that this is not really a proper fraction because the degree in the numerator is the same as the degree in the denominator. So what we need to do first is to do a long division so that we can rewrite this function into a different looking form and then we can do the partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so first, um, <clears throat> long division. So let's set up the long division right here. Um, I'm just going to draw this. I think this would be enough. And then we are going to draw the um, the division symbol. And then we are going to put the numerator inside the division symbol. So it will be x cubed plus 4x squared minus 2x minus 27. And then now you put the denominator on the outside, right? So you're going to be putting x cubed and then plus 4x squared, and then plus x, and then minus 6. Okay, so now we have the divisor. Okay, so how do we put the quotient? Um, as you can see here, we need to, uh, we count how many turns that we have in the divisor. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and that means we are going to start counting from the leading turn, 1, 2, 3, 4. So our answer will be above the negative 27. So if you put if you try to put the answer here, you got to figure out something that when you multiply by the x cube, it will give you the exact same thing as whatever that you have here, and which is x cube in this case. So all we need is just a 1. So we'll have a 1 here. So 1 times this whole polynomial, right? And then you are going to put that here. And because we're multiplying by 1, we are just going to just copy this and then put it here. So it will be x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 6. And then you have all that. And then now let's draw, just draw a line right here. And then now, as you can see here, because remember that long division, we are doing subtraction. So we can put a subtraction symbol right here to indicate the subtraction. Now, if you're using the, the, um, the polynomial here, subtracting this polynomial, then what we need to do is to um, there are different ways to do it. Some people will just change the signs for all those and then just add them. Or you can simply just do the subtraction. If you can, um, if you are clear with what the signs, how to deal with the signs, right? So now if you have x cubed minus x cubed, that's going to be zero because they're the same and then you're subtracting them. So usually uh, I don't put anything here because it's zero. So that's cleaner for this expression. Same thing for the 4x square, both of, positive 4x squared, right? So when you subtract them, they cancel each other out. So we are not going to be putting anything here. You can actually just put um, two balls right here to indicate the cancellation, right? And then now, and then what do we get here? Um, we have negative 2x minus x, okay? So that's negative 2 minus. And so we are going to be getting negative 3x. Then the next one, next one is going to be negative 27 minus negative 6x. See that there are double negative signs right here, so you're actually adding 6, so it will become negative 21. Okay, so far so good. So now um, this is done, right? As you can see here, the degree for the uh, the remainder is actually smaller than the degree for the divisor. So we cannot continue with the long division anymore. So we are going to rewrite this whole function as what? It's going to become the integral, okay? So first we are going to write out the, uh, the quotient, which is just one, and then plus, and then plus what? We are going to get a fraction here. The fraction is that we are going to be putting the remainder at in the numerator. So we'll have negative three X minus 21. And then now we need to put down the denominator. The denominator will be our divisor. So we can just copy. So it will be X cubed plus four X squared plus X minus six. 
and then the dx. Yeah, so just to just to label some stuff right here, this is actually our remainder, right? We are just reviewing with the long division stuff right here. Okay, so all this stuff, it's the divisor. And then this one right here is the quotient. Yeah, so if you feel that you are rusty <coughs> with um, <clears throat> the long division, then we are just reviewing how to write down the answer when we are doing the long division. Okay, so the next thing is that we are going to decompose this one, not the original one, but just this one. It's going to be simpler. Okay, <clears throat> so we are going to be decomposing this whole fraction, right? This whole fraction right here. So let me just, just surround this into partial fractions. Okay. So now, what do we do next? Um, what we can do next is that we are going to uh, write this fraction, okay? So we are going to be writing this fraction, negative 3x minus 21, that's our numerator. And then for the denominator, um, then it's really just that divisor, right? And what happened is that instead of writing this, we could have, um, we can write it in the factor form because we already uh, have that that's given, right? The factor form of this expression is already given. So it's x minus one, x plus two, x plus three. So we are going to put that right here. So we have x minus one and then x plus two and then x plus three. Okay, and because they are all linear factors right here, so what we need to do is to decompose it as a, okay, and then x minus one, and we need the fraction line, and then plus b, then the fraction line, and then the x plus 2, and then plus <clears throat> c. Same thing right here, we have the fraction line. Okay, so we have that. <clears throat> so if you try to put this all this together into a single fraction and then try to match their numerators, because when you add all this together, the two sides are having the same denominator. So what you are going to do is to match the top, match the numerators, right? So what is the LCD? What is the least common denominator for this? The, the least common denominator is x minus one, and then x plus two, and then x plus three. Okay, so now as you can see here, because we already have a x minus one, in the in the denominator for this fraction right here. So what happened is that if we are trying to get that into the same denominator as this x minus one, x plus two, x plus three, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by x plus two and x plus three. So what we are actually getting is that we are getting a times the x plus one and x plus three. We will not be multiplying by the x minus one because it already has the x minus one in the denominator. Okay, so it's actually going to turn into this. So we have, um, if you multiply the whole equation by this LCD right here on both sides, then you are going to be getting the A, and then you are multiplying by that X plus two, and then X plus three. And then next, it will be plus B. And then now for this one, as you can see here, because we already have the x plus 2. So that x plus 2 is going to be canceled. So all we need to do is to multiply by x minus 1 and x plus 3 but, uh, for this b, right? So we have x minus 1 and then x plus 3. And then using the same idea for the last fraction. So c times x minus 1 and x plus 2. And then you may say, what about the left-hand side of the equation? The left-hand side of the equation is when you multiply by this whole LCD here, 
all three factors will get canceled. So you're left with just the numerator. So we are having negative three X minus 21. So now we have this equation that we are trying to solve. And um, I don't think it's a nice idea to, to multiply rating out and try to match the coefficients on both sides. Um, the easier way to do it is to choose some values for X to plug in. Okay, so that's what I would do right here. Okay, so <clears throat> what am I going to do is that I'm going to let, let's say, I'm going to let X be one, okay? And then you may say, why do I let X be one? Because if you put the one in here, you can see that that's one minus one, that's going to be zero. That whole turn is going to disappear. Same thing here right? One minus one, and then that whole term will disappear. So you're left with just this turn and then the stuff on the left side. That's actually quite nice. So if you do that, then you are going to be getting negative three times the one. Okay, so I'm just going to use the negative <clears throat> three times the one minus 21, and then that's equal to a times something plus two, and then something plus three. So one here, one here, one here, right? So now what do we do? Just do the calculation. We are going to be getting uh, negative 24 on the left side of the equation. And then on the right side of the equation, that's going to be three, that's uh, four, right? Three times four is 12, 12a. So that becomes really obvious what a is, a is negative two. Okay. So now, Now let's just draw a line right here to separate your work so that it's more organized. Um, next one, next one is it's that we are going to let X be, uh, let's try a different number. A different number to make turns go away will be negative two here. That term will go away, that term will go away because of this factor of X plus two. So let X be negative two. Okay, so what we are getting is that we have negative three and then, um, times stuff, right? Minus 21 equals. This term goes away, so we are going to have only the term with a B. So we have minus one, and then plus three, and then, yes, yeah, so this term is also going to go away. So we have negative two, negative two, negative two. Doing the calculation here, that's a uh, positive six minus 21. So that's negative 15. And that's equal to, um, let's see. So that's negative three, that's one. So negative three B. So B is equal to five. So that's another value that we found, right? So one more and then we are good. So now what do you choose? What do you choose? Uh, we can choose X to be minus three, as you can see here. And you may say, why minus three? Because that turn is going to go away, that turn is going to go away, and then we are having just a turn with a C, and then we can solve a C, right? So same process right here. It's actually pretty easy. Equals the C with the X minus one, and then X plus two. So, we have minus three here, minus three here, minus three here. Now doing the calculation on the left side, we have a uh, positive nine minus 21, that's negative 12. Okay, so that's negative 12. And that's equal to negative four times negative one, that's four, four C. And so C is equal to negative three. So we actually have found all three unknown constants. So now what do we do? We come back to the original integral. We come back to the original integral. So our original integral is x cubed plus four x squared minus two x minus 27. Yes. And then, and then all that stuff at the bottom, right? X minus one, x plus two, x plus three, and then dx. And that's equal to, now remember that we actually did the long division and then turn it into this one, right? And we we decompose, 
we decompose this fraction here into partial fractions. So we are actually getting the integral of 1 plus negative 3x minus 21 all over all over x minus 1, x plus 2, and then x plus 3. Okay, so far so good. And then now what do we what do we do here? Um, yeah, so I still need to end the pair parentheses. And that actually we decompose it into, into this form right here. Into this form, right? A, B, and C all over those things, right? No, actually it's A over that. A over X minus one, B over X plus two, and C over X plus three, okay? And then A, B, Cs are found. So now let's continue with the calculation. So what are we getting here? We are actually just getting the integral of one and then now plus negative two because the A is negative two, right? A is negative two right here. And that's over, um, that's over X minus one plus, and then the B, right? The B is um, the green one, B is the five. And then what do we have here? Um, X minus two, no, X plus two. Yeah. And then the C, C is the orange number, which is negative three at the top, right? And then we have the X plus three, yeah, X plus three. And then dx. Now we can just integrate each turn directly. So that would be an easy process here. So integrating the one, we are going to be getting x. Integrating this negative two over x minus one, we get negative two. And then I'll end up absolute value x minus one plus the five. Right, so we have the ln of x plus two, and then minus the three, ln of uh, x plus three, and then plus the constant of integration, use k right here, don't use, don't use c, right? This is the constant of integration. Um, why don't we use C here? Because we already um, determined what C is, right? C it shouldn't be, can be any uh, arbitrary constant that we have here, right? So there is a variable conflict if you're using C here because that C is not the same C as this one. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and share my videos to others. It will give me support to make more videos. If you have questions or have a topic that you want me to talk about, please leave me a comment. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.